Good morning, everyone. Um, we'll wait just a few more minutes, give people a few more minutes to arrive, and then we'll get started. Dr. Sloan, you want to test and so see? That's if... working now? Yes, that's better. Why don't we get started? And just double checking, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Perfect. Well, I think um, now would be a great time to begin. I'm still looking through the attendee list here, but it looks like we have a quorum. Brian, can yes. you confirm? Yes, we do. Excellent. Perfect. Well, we'll start the meeting. And um, Brian, are, were you going over this slide? Or... Yeah, this is just a reminder. Uh, for everyone, uh, if you're dialing in by a telephone, uh, the Google Meet has muted you. If you need to speak to the group, press star six on your phone to unmute and mute. And we kindly ask those who are not speaking to the group to keep their uh, devices muted. Um, for DOR board members, reserve questions until the end of the presentations or ask questions in the Google Meet chat. For public comment, if you'd like to provide public comment, we need a conflict of interest statement. So please send an email to medicaidpharmacy at utah.gov. Um, attendees that are not members of the PT committee, please enter your contact information in the chat or send an email to medicaidpharmacy at utah.gov. And please uh, let us know who you are so we know who's attending um, with your name and organization. Thank you. Great, thank you, Brian. Um, <clears throat> all right, everyone should have a copy of our minutes from May. So take a moment to review those. All motion to approve. I'll second that. And we'll take a vote or we can continue waiting if people would like a, a little more time. But all in favor? 
Aye. 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 All opposed? And any abstentions? All right, the motion carries. That's great. And then housekeeping, Brian, I assume you wanted to discuss that one for? Yep, we, we've got a couple of things. Um, first, we'd like to uh, welcome our new pharmacy director, Lisa Angelos. Uh, Lisa, if you want to introduce yourself. I love the opportunity. Thanks, Brian. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm not necessarily new to PNT committee. Um, I just came over to the state after working with Change Healthcare, where Utah Medicaid is one of our clients. I worked with them for a couple of years. And um, prior to that, I worked at Intermountain Medical Center for 10 years. Um, as a pharmacy intern and as a pharmacist. And um, prior to that, I worked at the Utah Medicaid Drug Regimen Review Center for 10 years. So I'm really excited to be here and for the opportunities we have to do some good together. So thank you for the, the welcome and I'm excited to be here. Thanks, Lisa. And, and the other thing is uh, the next item of business is to uh, nominate and elect our committee chair. Cole Sloan has been doing that for about the last year. And if he wants to continue doing that, that he's open for nomination as well. Um, but I open the floor to the committee to um, nominate and so a chairperson and we'll go from there. Maybe I'll also ask, is there anyone who does not want to serve? Good one, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I see several willing participants. I think Cole's doing a great job. Is that a nomination? It. Take it for what you want it to be. <laughs> All right. Much appreciated, McKay. I was kind of hoping you'd throw your hat back in the ring there. But. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, no, thank you. All right. So is that a nomination? Um, if if Cole wants to keep going, then I would absolutely support that. And and I've appreciated what he's been doing, and he's doing a great job. So if if that's something he's willing to do and and is able to do that, I would I would absolutely nominate him. And I would second that. Uh, Cole, is that a nomination you're willing to accept? I am. And if anyone is interested, happy to also defer. So if there's anyone hanging out on the sidelines be happy to discuss um but if if no one is able to take that on it's not appreciably different but as mckay kind of i loved the explanation last year um yeah, just a little more review and things like that and kind of planning ahead but not a huge difference in time commitment i would say which is nice so if anyone if that if anyone is on the fence and i push them over by all means <laughs> speak now but otherwise i'm happy to accept Hearing none, right. um, and do we vote on that, Brian? Yep. Okay. So, all in favor of Cole Sloan as the PNG committee chair for the next year, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And any abstentions? All right. Motion carries. Cole, you're the chair for the next year. Thank you. Thanks, Cole. Thank you. It looks like we have Dr. Wynn for a 
DUR board update next. Yep, and she's actually asked me to take a, take over for her on that. Um, so uh, Dr. Elizabeth Gargaro was a member of the DUR board and she resigned that position. Um, and so um, wish her the best in her other endeavors. In the June and July meeting, the DUR board reviewed adult and pediatric insomnia. So that fits with our discussion today. And um, also with consideration of coverage of melatonin. And so that's something that uh, was approved and is now in, uh, being reviewed internally. In August, the DUR board reviewed uh, drafted CDC pain guidelines, uh, some updates from the guidelines that were issued a few years ago, um, and also discussed the efforts that we've made within the state in our uh, opioid interventions. And, and last week, the DUR board discussed uh, Munjaro, uh, GLP-1 GIV agonist. So it's a combination of an, a, an old mechanism and with a new mechanism for uh, treatment of diabetes. And so that's the DUR update and I'll turn it back to you. Great. Um, and next we have Dr. Lulo, and please correct me if I'm pronouncing that name incorrect. No, you are correct. Okay, I will go ahead and take it away. Give me one second to present my slides. Okay, good morning, everyone. Today, I will be reviewing the non-benzodiazepine non-barbiturate sedative hypnotics. This topic serves as an update to our previous P&T report on these agents, which was completed in 2019. Agents in this drug class are approved for insomnia, and one agent, Tazamelteon, is approved for non-24-hour sleep-wake disorder and smith magnus syndrome, abbreviated SMS. According to the International Classification of Sleep Disorders, third edition, insomnia is defined as trouble initiating or maintaining sleep that results in daytime symptoms and occurs despite a suitable sleep environment and adequate opportunity to sleep. Insomnia may occur independently or comorbidly with other conditions such as anxiety, depression, or chronic pain. In order to be diagnosed with chronic insomnia, symptoms must persist for greater than or equal to three times per week for at least three months. Non 24 hour sleep wake disorder occurs when an individual is unable to maintain entrainment between their endogenous circadian clock and the 24 hour environment, often due to the inability to perceive light. SMS is a rare genetic neurodevelopmental disorder that often results in sleep disturbances potentially related to altered melatonin production. The reviewed agents with an FDA-approved indication for insomnia belong to various drug classes, including drugs, erexin receptor antagonists, H1 antihistamine antidepressants, and melatonin receptor agonists. This slide shows the agents that belong to the Z drug class. Sulfidin is available in a variety of formulations, including a rapid-acting sublingual tablet and an oral spray, while the remaining insomnia products are available only as oral tablets or capsules. Labeling for Zolpidem products recommends lower initiation dosages for women due to the decreased clearance of the drug relative to men. These products are taken once per night immediately before bedtime, except intermezzo, which is used as needed upon middle of the night awakening. Salopon may also be taken after going to bed with difficulty falling asleep. The Z drugs and the erection receptor antagonists listed on the next slide are scheduled for controlled substances due to the potential risk of abuse. This slide shows the remaining agents with an FDA-approved indication for insomnia. Since we completed our 2019 P&T report, two new orexin receptor antagonists have been approved by the FDA, Daridorexin and Limberexin. Although the Suvorexin prescribing information does not recommend an initial lower dose for women, 
drug exposure is increased in women compared to men and among patients with obesity, requiring additional consideration when increasing the dose. Except for limborexin, these listed agents should be taken within 30 minutes prior to bedtime. Although these agents are FDA approved for treating insomnia in adults, the indication varies according to the list to the insomnia subtype and may differ between formulations of the same active ingredient. Agents listed on this slide are FDA approved for sleep onset insomnia, except low dose doxepin. The erection receptor antagonist, low dose doxepin, controlled release sulfidem, and azoflaclone are approved for sleep maintenance insomnia. Unlike other hypnotics, intermezzo is uniquely indicated for trouble falling back asleep after awakening in the middle of the night. The melatonin receptor agonist Tazamelteon is not FDA approved for insomnia. Tazamelteon was approved in 2014 as an oral capsule for non 24 hour sleep wake disorder in adults. Since we completed our 2019 PNT report, the oral capsule formulation has been FDA approved for the treatment of nighttime sleep disturbances related to SMS in patients 16 years of age and older, and as an oral suspension for children ages 3 to 15 years. Several guidelines recommend cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia, abbreviated CBTI, as the primary first-line treatment. However, the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, abbreviated AASM, recognizes that some patients may not benefit from CBTI and recommends hypnotic pharmacotherapy either as a loan or in combination with CBTI. Clinical guidelines for the management of insomnia predate FDA approval of Daridorexin and Limboraxin. Most clinical guidelines that provide guidance on agent selection recommend Remelteon, Lotus Doxepin, the Z-Drugs, and Subarexin for the treatment of chronic insomnia in adults, but the strength of recommendations in favor of using these agents tends to be weak across reviewed U.S. guidelines. This signifies that the treatment approaches may not apply to all patients due to a lack of certainty about their appropriateness. In such cases, treatment selection should be guided by physician clinical judgment in the context of patient preferences and values. Nonetheless, the weak recommendation strength should not be interpreted as a lack of evidence for drug efficacy in the management of insomnia, nor does it imply that the recommendations are relevant to patient care. The 2017 AASM guideline does not generally recommend one medication over another, but rather provides recommendations according to the particular insomnia subtype. It recommends the Z-drugs and Remelteon for sleep onset insomnia, and Azoplaclone, Zolpidem, Lodos Doxepin, and Suvorexin for sleep maintenance insomnia, which in some cases differs from the FDA-approved indication as noted on the slide. Although Tazamelteon had been FDA-approved for non-24-hour sleep-wake disorder in 2014, the 2019 British Association for Psychopharmacology abbreviated BAP and 2015 AASM guideline, guidelines do not include recommendations for or against its use. Both guidelines recommend melatonin to improve circadian entrainment for non-sighted adults. The 2019 BAP guideline recommends behavioral approaches and scheduled light exposure to improve entrainment issues in people with sight. The single guideline identified for the management of patients with SMS, the parents and researchers interested in Smith-Magnus syndrome, abbreviated PRIMS, predates the 2020 approval of Tazamelteon in patients with SMS and thus does not comment on its use. For the management of sleep, the guideline encourages the use of non-pharmacologic interventions and the use of over-the-counter melatonin, either alone or in combination with ace -butylol. In populations with insomnia, we identified four head-to-head -head RCTs. A phase three RCT referred to as the Sunrise One trial that evaluated lumbar accent compared to the lower dosage of extended release sulfidem in older adults. A small RCT evaluating switching from benzodiazepines to subarexin versus azoplaclone in patients with major depressive disorder and benzodiazepine resistant insomnia. And two RCTs published prior to 2019 comparing immediate release sulfidem to various dosages of xaloplon or azoplaclone in older adults or the general adult population. 
In older adults, both dosages of Limborexin produce significantly greater reductions in objective latency to persistent sleep compared to the lower dosage of extended release sulfonym as early as nights one and two, with a significant difference between active arms maintained to the end of the treatment period at one month. In addition, objective sleep efficiency and wake after sleep onset significantly improved with both dosages of Limborexin compared to Zolpidem at the beginning and end of the treatment period. A significant improvement was observed for subjective sleep onset latency during the first seven nights and at the end of the month with Limborexin 5 and 10 milligrams compared to the 6.25 milligrams of extended release sulfonum. In terms of safety, numerically more somnolence occurred in Limborexin treated patients compared to Zolpidem treated patients with a number needed to harm of 39 and 18 for Limborexin 5 milligrams and 10 milligrams respectively compared to extended release sulfonum. In patients with major depressive disorder and benzodiazepine-resistant insomnia, Suvorexin and Azopoclone perform similarly to each other for improving insomnia severity, sleep quality, and symptoms of depression and anxiety, with no significant differences indicated at week two or week four. In terms of drug-specific adverse events, unpleasant taste was reported only in Azopoclone-treated patients, with no reports occurring in Suvorexin-treated patients. Our 2019 P&T report included two meta-analysis that showed sleep onset latency significantly improved with sulfonin 10 milligrams compared to the lower in dosage of zolopon 5 milligrams. A separate short-term RCT that was not included in either meta-analysis showed that zolopon 10 milligrams, but not the 5 milligram dose, statistically improved subjective sleep latency compared to zolpidem 5 milligram at weeks 1 and 2 of treatment in older adults. However, subjective total sleep time significantly improved with sulfonin 5 milligrams compared to zolopon 5 milligrams. In terms of safety, the incidence of somnolence was numerically higher with sulfonin 5 milligrams versus zolopon 5 milligrams. Azoplaclone 1 milligram was less effective than sulfonin 10 milligrams at improving latency to persistent sleep and sleep efficiency in adults. Yet a dose response re relationship was observed with higher doses of azoplaclone, resulting in comparable efficacy to zolpidem 10 milligrams. Rates of unpleasant taste were reported more frequently in azoplaclone treated patients, whereas rates of dizziness and hallucinations were higher in patients treated with zolpidem. Overall, central nervous system related adverse events were reported more frequently in the zolpidem arm compared to any dose of azoplaclone. No relevant head-to-head -head studies published since 2019 were found for Tazimeltion, Doxepin, Daridorexin, or, or, or Rimeltion versus any other agent of interest for their approved indications. The Z drugs, Doxepin, Rimeltion, and the orexin receptor antagonists include the label warnings to reevaluate for potential comorbid conditions if insomnia fails to remit after seven to 10 days on pharmacotherapy, recommendation to reevaluate for worsening depression or suicidal ideation, the elevated risk of next day impairment, and the risk of complex sleep behaviors. While the development of complex sleep behaviors is included as a label warning for most of the reviewed agents, only the Z drugs have it listed as a black box warning. Also, only the Z drugs carry a warning for the possibility of withdrawal symptoms, which may occur upon abrupt discontinuation or rapid dose reduction. Doxepin, Rimeltion, Tazimeltion, and the orexin receptor antagonists do not carry warnings for withdrawal effects and do not appear to induce physical dependence. However, of these, the orexin receptor antagonists are known to have abuse potential. The Z drugs, Doxepin, and Rimeltion have a warning for the potential development of behavioral changes in abnormal thinking. Orexin receptor antagonists contain a unique warning for the potential risk of sleep paralysis hallucinations that occur either immediately before falling asleep or while waking up, and cataplexy-like symptoms. Remontion carries a unique warning for the potential risk of altered reproductive hormone concentrations. Tazimeltion carries a warning only for the risk of somnolence following administration. For the comparison of Lumborexin versus extended release sulfidem, there is evidence from only one RCT, the Sunrise One trial, which showed greater improvements in objective latency to persistent sleep 
sleep efficiency, wake after sleep onset, and subjective sleep onset latency with Lembroxin 5 and 10 milligrams compared to the lower dosage of extended release sulfidem in older adults with insomnia. A few efficacy differences between immediate release sulfidem versus xaloplon or zofloclone were demonstrated when comparing low to high end dosages, but for the most part, agents perform similarly when comparing low to low end or high to high end dosages. The exception was a single short term study showing that sulfidem 5 mg was superior to xaloplon 5 mg for improving subjective total sleep time at weeks 1 and 2 of treatment in elderly adults with insomnia. Most clinical guidelines that provide guidance on agent selection recommend Remelteon, Lodos, Doxepin, the Z drugs, and Suvorexin for the treatment of chronic insomnia in adults. But the strength of recommendations in favor of using these agents tends to be weak across reviewed US guidelines. Clinical guidelines for non 24 hour sleep wake disorder do not, include do not include recommendations for or against Tazamelteon's use. The reviewed guidelines predate the regulatory approval of the newer Rexin receptor antagonists, Limborexin and Daridorexin, and the approval of Tazamelteon for SMS. The board may consider to have at least one hypnotic preferred for sleep onset insomnia and at least one agent preferred for sleep maintenance insomnia. The board may also consider including at least one non-controlled hypnotic as preferred for sleep onset or sleep maintenance insomnia. The Z drugs and orexin receptor antagonists are classified as Schedule IV controlled substances. Remelteon and doxepin are both non-controlled substances. However, Remelteon is approved only for sleep onset insomnia in adults, whereas low-dose doxepin is approved for sleep maintenance insomnia in adults. As a reminder, higher strength formulations of doxepin are not FDA approved for insomnia. Among <clears throat> Excuse me. Among Medicaid fee-for-service pharmacy claims data in 2022, the most utilized agents in order of claim counts were zolfidem, azoflaclone, and zalaplon. These are each PDL preferred products. Among zolfidem claims, 67% were for the immediate release formulation and 10% were for the extended release formulation. In 2022, there were less than 10 pediatric claims altogether accounting for less than five patients receiving either immediate release sulfonin, suvorexin, or remelteon. No utilization was identified for tazamelteon. This concludes the presentation. Thank you for your time and attention. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Dr. Lulo. And we'll open the floor up for any questions. What a great review, much appreciated. Hearing none, we can start to move towards a discussion amongst the group here. I think it was a, a good presentation, good information. Um, at looking at what was done at the, the last time we reviewed these drugs, even though there's new drugs, new information from last time, um, there was a motion made at that time to have at least one agent for sleep onset and at least one for sleep maintenance. And, and so what was done in 2019 is consistent with what uh, Dr. Lulo is recommending today. Great, and would the preferred thing to be reaffirm that or if there's not a need for changing what was existing in 2019, would we? Uh, no, mo no motion is required if if no action is necessary. Looks like someone has raised their hand in the chat. I wasn't sure if we have the. <clears throat> COI form or I'm not positive. This is Sam from Select Health. I just had a question. Yeah. 
um, if it's appropriate now. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. With melatonin being recommended for non 24 hour sleep and SMS, has there been any talks of adding it to the PDL for coverage and as a step for the Hetlio's PA criteria? I believe it was looked at in May, um, but I haven't seen it come on to the PDL since then. Um, the state is looking at that for coverage. It, it's a little more complicated than it might seem uh, for any Medicaid program, but specifically for Utah Medicaid to cover a drug. Um, it's required that the drug meet the CMS definition of a covered outpatient drug. As an over-the-counter supplement, melatonin does not meet the FDA, uh, the CMS definition of a covered outpatient drug. And uh, that affects um, uh, matching funds from the federal government to the state program uh, and a, a number of other things. And, and there's a lot of, um, I guess, procedural things that would have to take place for coverage to happen. And so that's something that um, we've been discussing internally um you know since that may meeting and so it's it, it's still a po possibility it's still on on the table um but unfortunately it does take a little more time than if it was an fda approved rebateable drug um, participation in the federal medicaid drug rebate program is another uh, requirement for something to meet the definition of a cms uh, CMS definition of a covered outpatient drug. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I was just wondering if you weren't able to add it to the PDL if we were going forward with that PA criteria, um, if members were having to pay out of pocket for it. Um, any coverage at all. Uh, it's not just the PDL, but any coverage at all. Because drugs that are not listed on the PDL, if they meet the CMS definition of a covered outpatient drug, are covered regardless of whether they're not listed on the PDL. And so that's the the, the first and biggest hurdle that we need to uh, work through. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great, appreciate that background, Brian. That was, uh, yeah. Uh, interesting little factoid there. There was always more to it. Medicaid is is unique relative to other payers. Yeah. And from the 2019 meet, was the at least one non-controlled hypnotic as preferred for sleep onset or sleep maintenance insomnia? Was that on there as well? Okay, Let's see. I, I didn't think so, but just wanted to confirm. That seemed uh, like a very prudent recommendation. It replied, um, applied mostly to Bromeltion and Doxepin, it seemed like, but uh, I think a, a non-schedule medi medication would be prudent to have on the PDL. I can formulate that into a better motion. Let's see, I'll go. And, and currently, we do have uh, Rosarum as preferred on the PDL. Okay. Then would that be a redundant motion, essentially? Is that uh, not necessarily? Um, you know, we we do have that in place. Um, making the motion would uh, add more strength to that. Very helpful. Uh, you know, I don't think either of those. Right, because we we, yeah. we can make changes. We do review and make changes every year to the PDL. So perfect. Well, I'll I'll make a motion for at least one non-controlled hypnotic, as preferred for sleep onset or sleep maintenance insomnia. Um, I'll second that motion. Thank you, Dr. Siegfried. And you are too fast, Susan. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, what was that, Dr. Sheffield? <laughs> I think he's starting the motion. Didn't click my uh, unmute button fast enough. <laughs> I 
Excellent. <clears throat> all, uh, all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 All opposed? Oh, sorry, Dr. Sheffield, was it? I'm in favor. All opposed? And any abstentions? All right, the motion carries. And I suppose that'd be helpful if Romelteon or Doxapin ever do get scheduled. I don't suspect that will be the case, but good to have codified in there. <clears throat> And if a patient was specifically from like um, an, an elderly patient, would they, there would still be the prior authorization process they could go through to obtain some of the other um, Suvarex um, and then the other ones, that is, the Sunrise one trial, sorry, I'm blanking on the name right now. Right, so if a product is non-preferred, then um, trial failure contraindication is basically the PA criteria to get a non-preferred drug, unless the PDL specifies that there's separate criteria, which is the case for Hetlioz. Hetlioz has its own PA form. Okay, because right. the indication is great. So for lumbar accent, so and yeah, you can see in the utilization there, um, some patients are accessing that every year. So. Seems like an area where there'll be new developments and new things coming and hopefully more head-to-head -head information there. Was there anything else regarding this class of uh, non-benzodiazepine, non-barbiturate um, sedative hypnotics that we'd like to discuss as a group? I don't think so. I... I think we may have the opportunity to yield some time and and finish early. Great. So I'll, 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 I'll make that motion, motion to adjourn. I'll second. I'll second. <laughs> Clayton, second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Oh, wait. Did, oh, Cl Dr. Sheffield, re raising your hand is in favor. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All opposed? And any abstentions? All right. The motion carries. Um, we'll, that will conclude this meeting and we'll see everyone in November. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.